Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. And that breaking news is happening in northern Oakland County, where state police and Oakland County deputies have a home surrounded in Holly Township. State police say inside that home is a man and woman suspected of carjacking a grandmother at gunpoint earlier today in Monroe County. Homes near that area have been evacuated out of precaution. Let's get to Tim Pamplin on the scene with the night cam. Tim. This barricaded situation occurring on East Maple Street. That's the main road coming into town from I-75. The two people now barricaded in the home are wanted out of Monroe County for a carjacking of a grandmother earlier this afternoon. Now at six o'clock, we showed you their pictures. There they are. Please say that's William Lanham on the left and Michelle Holliday on the right. Monroe sheriffs say these two are behind the carjacking of the grandmother uh, with her two grandchildren in Frenchtown Township earlier this afternoon. Someone saw the story on the news and then called 911 when they spotted the vehicle up near Holly at a rest area. That sent the authorities in a high gear, a short pursuit, and the couple crashed the vehicle they had stolen and then ran into a home. But the occupants of the home escaped uninjured. Police have now locked down the neighborhood. So we've pretty much evacuated all the neighbors in the area around the immediate part of the house. Uh, I would tell anybody else, uh, and we've got quite a few folks walking around in the area, uh, to just stay in their house tonight until we resolve this. So this is now a waiting game. You've got the armed couple inside this complete stranger's home. The homeowner did get out safely, uninjured. Police are now trying to talk to the man and woman inside the home. We'll keep you updated as this situation develops. That is a scene in Holly tonight with a night cam. Tim Pamplin, Local 4. All right, you bet, Tim. Decision 2021, primary election results still coming in, but it appears this evening Mayor Mike Duggan and Anthony Adams will be the two facing off for Detroit's top job in November. Ten candidates are running for two spots for the November election. Duggan has a commanding lead, and second is Anthony Adams, who was deputy mayor under Kwame Kilpatrick. Voters in Detroit also deciding that controversial ballot proposal to change the city charter. And right now, Proposal P going down in flames, losing by more than a two to one margin. That's with more than seven. In fact, we're now up to uh, three quarters of the vote is in. Yeah. Detroit City Clerk Janice Winfrey running for her fifth term is on her way to the November ballot. It appears she will face off against Denzel McCampbell, who is the communications director for the office of Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib. The top two vote getters advanced to the general election, which is, of course, in November. Also tonight in Dearborn, seven candidates running for mayor there. And right now, state rep Abdullah Hamoud is leading the field. The top two finishers there will also move on to November. In Macomb County, a heated primary in Sterling Heights where Mayor Michael Taylor is seeking re-election. Taylor made national news last year after breaking party ranks and announcing he voted for Joe Biden. They'll face off against Ken Nelson in November. And in Oakland County, Clawson overwhelmingly voting to approve a $55 million public schools bond proposal. We have a lot of other races that we're watching tonight, including those for Detroit City Council. We'll keep updating results across Metro Detroit at clickondetroit.com. And of course, first thing in the morning on Local 4 News Today, beginning at 4.30 a.m. The teenager who drowned over the weekend in a canal going into the Detroit River on the east side was the oldest of 11 grandchildren. And now his neighbors and friends are rallying to try to raise money for a service. Jason Colthorpe spoke to his family tonight and has a story from the east side. This young man had just turned 15 on June 28th. His grandmother, who raised him, told me when he jumped in the water, his feet immediately got tangled up on the bottom. He had more people than I thought he did, more love out here than I thought he did. The memorial is forming on the tree in front of Nathaniel Boland's house. The more his grandmother Linda sees it grow, the more she misses her first grandchild. It's hurting me really bad. I wake up every day crying. I can't sleep at night. I come out on the floor. It's just, you know, I'm used to him being out here with me. It hurts me. Nathaniel was with his cousins Saturday near Maharis Gentry Park on the east side when he hopped into a canal to cool off. They can hear him for help and seeing his arm go up in the air yelling for help and then that was the end of it. It took rescuers about 90 minutes to pull Nathaniel from the water that feeds into the Detroit River. He was a good swimmer because he used to swim in the lake with somebody else and he's okay. never done this. They were telling me the seaway got him. Okay. It was so far down. He got tangled. Tangled up. And then when they found him, 
he was all, he had seaweed all over his body. Linda, who thought it was a joke when she first got the call, didn't get to the water until after her 15 year old sophomore to be was gone. And it was something I didn't want to see. It was terrible. Some friends of the family and neighbors actually had a fundraiser earlier in the evening at the park, not far from where they live. They're going to have another one on Friday just to try and raise some money so they can possibly have a service, at the very least have Nathaniel cremated. We've put a link to the online fundraiser that they also have with this story at clickondetroit.com. In Detroit, Jason Colthorpe, Local 4. Okay, Jason, thanks. Let's check in with Ben with uh, some warmer temperatures coming up in the forecast. But I guess uh, some folks could see some rain tomorrow, right? Yes. Uh, well, Mother Nature kind of floating some trial balloons. Not giving us the full treatment yet, but just kind of inching the temperatures up and just a slight chance at a shower tomorrow. Let's look at what happened tonight because it's going to be kind of a similar setup just a little bit further south. We did see these showers and storms develop in northern lower Michigan. They faded pretty quickly there at sunset. Now tomorrow, again, this is going to be pretty much over our neighborhood. Uh, we'll see once we get to the peak heating of the afternoon and maybe just into the early evening. A couple showers, maybe a rumble of thunder out there, but again, not covering a lot of real estate and not packing a lot in the way of moisture. Should be dry as we get into Thursday morning and we'll spend all of Thursday dry, but look at the temperatures inching up ever so slightly each day until we hit the 90s early next week. But when the humidity kicks in, that's when things become very noticeable. And we'll look at what difference that's going to play, possibly some triple digit heat indexes as we head towards the back of this forecast. That's all coming up in a few minutes, guys. Yeah. Okay, Ben. New York Times reporting tonight that the FDA could give full approval to the Pfizer COVID vaccine by early September. The FDA granted, of course, emergency use authorization to the Pfizer vaccine late last year. The New York Times reports the agency is aiming to give full approval by Labor Day. Meanwhile, the CDC issuing a new eviction ban. The ban applies to areas of the country with high or substantial transmission of COVID-19 and will last until October 3rd. The Biden administration says most most Americans would be protected with the new ban covering about 90% of the country's population. President Biden also sending a strong message to some Republican governors who he believes aren't doing enough to stop the spread of the virus. Just two states, Florida and Texas, account for one third of all new COVID-19 cases in the entire country. Just two states. Look, we need leadership from everyone. If some governors aren't willing to do the right thing to beat this pandemic, then they should allow businesses and universities who want to do the right thing to be able to do it. I say to these governors, please help. But if you aren't going to help, at least get out of the way of the people who are trying to do the right thing. Well, right now, about 70% of U.S. adults have had at least one shot of a COVID-19 vaccine. Highland Park Police and Fire Departments held an event as part of the National Night Out initiative. Those in attendance got to enjoy music, food, a bounce house, a petting zoo, and a visit from the Wayne County Sheriff's Mounted Unit. One lucky student who just started at Wayne State was awarded a $2,500 scholarship. National Night Out is a community building campaign aimed at promoting police and community partnerships. All right, still ahead, a West Michigan realtor and his client are put into handcuffs while looking at a property. Looked outside and noticed that there were officers there and, and they were um, pointing guns towards the property. They believe they were targeted because they're black. How police are responding coming up. And a driver is trapped in a burning vehicle along the Northwestern, along Northwestern Highway. What was inside his back seat that a good Samaritan used to get him to safety. Back on the spring walls, he just crashed in another vehicle. But first, a marijuana heist downriver turns into a high-speed chase. How it ended next.